teachers, we typically love a lot of teaching tools. We all have our favorites. And one of my favorites is definitely a game. If I can teach using a game, I'm gonna take that opportunity every single time. I think the engagement is there, students love to participate, and they don't realize how much hard work they're doing while they're playing the game. So I wanted to share my top three simplest games with you that work in every content area and need little to no supplies for students to play. Game number one is called Roll Your Score. All you need for this is one die or two dice if students are working in groups. Students can play this game with any content work. So if they're working on their math worksheet, you can set them up to play this game. Science or social studies, set them up to play this game. It's perfect because it feels like fun, but it actually is a lot of academic work. The way this game works, all you're doing is one at a time, students are solving a question or working a problem on their worksheet. Their partner then checks their work, and if they get the problem right, they then get to roll their score. I like to have my students just write their score off to the side beside the question number and circle it. At the end, they tally their score, and whoever made the most points doing their work wins. My second favorite game to play with my students is Connect Four. Now, don't worry if you don't have the classic board game, you don't necessarily even need it with all the little tiles that you drop into the holder. You don't even necessarily need the board game to play this game with your students. The way I play Connect Four in my classroom is that we work whole groups. Students are split into teams and each team is assigned a color of sticky note. I then put a digital Connect Four board, which looks like an array of seven by six squares up on the board. And as students are working, if they get questions correct, they then get to come place their team's sticky note in one of the squares on the board. They're racing to see who can get the first four in a row. Same concept as Connect Four, but limited supplies needed. This can also be done in small groups or in partners. I have laminated Connect Four boards that I'll pull out for students and they can use those to work the same style of gameplay in a partner or a small group. I also do have the classic Connect Four board that I pull out to let students play while they are working on tasks as well. That actually goes for any and all board games. Students can use almost every classic board game as their reward for getting a question right. It's so much fun and students love to see who can get four in a row first. My third and final game that I'm sharing today is quite possibly the easiest. All you need for this is a hundreds chart. I like to display one on the board while my students are working all on the same task. Every time they get a question correct, they get to come up and write their name or initials on one number on the hundreds chart. The more questions you get correct, the more opportunities you get to write your name on the board. Then when everyone has completed the number of problems or the amount of time I set aside for the activity, we use a random number generator to see who wins. I love this game because whether you got one question right or 20 questions right, everyone still has an opportunity to be the winner and feel that moment of success. Now, prizes for this can be super easy. Sometimes my prize is that you get to be the line leader walking us out the door to recess that day. Super fun, super easy, and students don't realize how much work they're getting done while they're playing. Now, if you haven't used a lot of games in your classroom before or you're worried about implementing this with your students, I wanted to share really quickly just a few things that I always do when introducing games to my students. Now, by the end of the school year, students are really familiar with these routines and expectations, but at the beginning of the year, most students have never played games like this in the classroom. That's why I spend a lot of time teaching and working with students just to set the expectations for the game. We do examples and non-examples. I let students practice with partners while I'm there watching and monitoring to give feedback not only on their content work, but on the behavior expectations I'm looking for while they are playing. It's a personal favorite of mine to ask for the non-examples. Who can show me how we're not gonna come up to the board and write our name on the hundreds chart for random number? It's a great way to set those expectations and make sure your gameplay goes really smooth. If you're looking for more ideas just like this to help you bring the fun back to the classroom and the sanity back to the work that you're doing, make sure you check out How to Love Teaching Again by Jamie Sears. It's available everywhere you can buy books and it is chock full of 
great advice and really easy to implement ideas you can start using in your classroom right now. I'm ready for some gameplay and I know my students are going to love it. These three games are the perfect way to review and practice skills with your students without them even realizing it. I always tell people I was not competitive until I became a third grade teacher and now I'm so competitive and I love the opportunity to get a game going on with my students in the classroom. Let me know down in the comments, have you become competitive in all of your teaching experience or do you have a favorite game you love to use with your students? Let me know! If you aren't already, please make sure you are subscribed. We put out new content here every single week and we would love to have you join our community. Last but not least, hope you guys have a not so wimpy day. Bye!